all right guys welcome back to the next workshop build video in today's video i'm going to be putting up what are called double top plates on the walls all right if you look over my shoulder you're going to see some two by fours standing up here against the walls i've already started a little bit on my double top plate work right here in this corner I am using a mixture of 10 foot, 12 foot, and 16 foot long 2x4s to stitch the walls together. If you're not familiar or don't know what a double top plate means, if you look at the walls right now, there is a top board. The top plate is up there. A double is when you just put another one on top of it. But you want to do it in a certain way so that your corners overlap, stitching your two corner walls together and your joints of your double top plates, you wanna make sure it is above a stud or a header. I've already got my scaffolding out. I'm gonna go ahead and get up on here, go ahead and continue working where we are, and I'll show you guys what I mean as we go along. As you can see, my wall is not perfectly straight or my top plate board is not perfectly straight. This is where some clamps come in handy, force them together, make them straight, and then nail them in place. One thing is you're nailing your top plate through, make sure you put your nails right above your studs. That way, if you ever have to come back, drill through your top plate for electrical or other utilities, you're not gonna run into a nail. That will make a bad day when you stick a really expensive wood bit in here and find out if you have Mr. Nail right in the way. There are a few things you want to take into consideration when planning out where to put your double top plate. First and foremost, where are your wall joints? Where do two sections of walls come together? You want to make sure your double top plate overlaps those by at least two stud widths or about 48 inches if you can help it at all. The other thing to take into consideration is the fewer joints you have on your double top plate, the better. So this is the place to buy that really long dimensional lumber. Your 10, 12, or 16 foot long boards are where it's gonna be at for this. I'm using a mixture of 10, 12, and 16 footers. As long as possible where I can, that's the name of the game. The purpose is to make this as uniform as possible and reduce your joints so that it really adds a lot of strength and rigidity to your walls. So where I'm heading to next is my other end wall. The way I framed up my workshop, my long walls were put up first and my end walls were put up second. That means my end walls are on the inside of the perimeter. I wanna put on my top plate on the end walls first and let the top plate hang over the outside wall, creating effectively, I guess kind of like a half lap joint and locking the two together that way. All right, so right here, this is my wall joint. So I want to move away from it and give myself plenty of room for that double top plate to cover, but then also not create too short of a double top plate for this portion. I've measured and marked my stud. I'm gonna climb up here, put my double top plate on this one, and then let it hang over long. When I get down to that area, I will then trim it to fit with my circular saw while I'm up there. Oh, wow. That's right at eight feet. I'm not gonna sacrifice a 10 foot two by four. I'm just gonna grab an eight footer real quick. Save that one for another day. All right, I'm back with an eight footer. This worked out perfectly on this wall. Just put an eight foot board in place. It lines up dead center over top of this stud, which allows me to share it with the double top plate and reaches all the way to the end and overlaps my outside wall. I'm using the same three inch long galvanized ring shake nails that I've been using for this whole project. You could do screws if you want to. I'm just using what I have on hand and with this Pazlid nail gun, it makes quick work of this job too. With the first nail in place to hold it flush here, I take my quick clamp, I go on down here a little ways and I just like to clamp it in place, pull them together flush and then I'll go ahead and start finish nailing out this way. Top plate gets two nails per stud spacing, so about two nails every 16 inches. A 
as you can see here I had to put two clamps on this corner I put this one here to keep them flush front to back and then this one just to pull that double top plate down on top of the wall making sure everything's nice and secure I also like to put four nails on this square that overlaps the next wall and of course two here for this stud. So here on the ends you have six fasteners going through to really help things lock down. My next piece to go on is this one right here. I've already done the double top plate down there and on this wall a little bit of the way so I know I'm going to have to cut this one to fit. What I'm going to do rather than just put my tape measure out here, measure and mark the board is a little thing called relative dimensioning. I'm gonna hold the board up in place, slide it all the way down there to touch, and then over here at the overlap, mark it to cut, and cut it with my circular saw here in place. As you guys can see, having the scaffolding out here is pretty handy. It enables me to literally just roll around, nail this down as I go. If I didn't have the walls braced, sure, I could be rolling around here like, I don't know, a guy on a scaffolding, but the walls have to be braced. That's all right though, it makes it easier. I did not have to get down and up for this whole section and that makes the job go a lot quicker. Plus, I can have all my tools here on the platform and not drop stuff, or I have to go up and down, up and down. And that saves a lot of labor and makes for a happier, more enjoyment time. Next thing I'm going to do is work on putting my brackets on top of my double top plates on the wall and spacing them out for my roof trusses to attach into. This little bracket goes by a bunch of different names, most commonly Hurricane Tie, and it is designed to help hold your roof to your walls. I'm going to be putting one of these on each side of what will eventually be where my truss attaches, and I'm going to be putting them at two feet on center. I'm going to pull my tape from this wall at the very top, measure out 24 inches, attach a bracket, 48 inches, attach a bracket, so forth and so on, all the way down the full length of my 32 foot long walls. To attach these brackets, I'm going to be using screws, but these are appropriate rated screws. These are Simpson Strong Tie SD connector screws. They are made and specifically engineered to be used with your galvanized brackets and work. So, they're not just any screw, they are absolutely not just a drywall screw, and they are much easier to install than hammering. At least my fingers think so. All right guys, bear with me as we look at the tape upside down, but that's the way it goes when you're measuring from your right hand side. So here is 24 inches on center. What I did is took away half the thickness of my rafter, which is three quarters of an inch, 
put a mark and put an X here. The X indicates where the bracket is going to go and the mark indicates where to line up the side of my bracket. So at that point right there, when I attach it, it is exactly 24 inches on center. Using my reference mark up top, I'm gonna to put my plate right here where it needs to go. And then I'm going to attach the plate on the outside through my double top plates with all the possible screws that fit in the holes. There are five of these and we're gonna use every single one. If the brackets look a little bit aged, it's because they are. These probably are about six years old. I've had them, never got them took back to the store, but I'm getting them to finally use them today. And that's the name of the game. Finally use the stuff I've been hanging on to forever. I'm pushing the scaffolding down to the other end of the workshop and across the floor because I've got the first wall done. As you guys saw, it's not a very complex process. Probably the biggest thing that you're gonna to want to really keep an eye on is that your tape measure and your measurements are dead on. Whatever your spacing is, stick with it. Double check it. Make sure you're not deviating. Also, make sure the fins of the brackets are sitting down on your top plate nice and secure so that they are perpendicular to the top plate and standing up good. The number one takeaway as you're doing this, make sure you pull your measurements off the same end wall. Do not just assume that your building is perfect and you can measure this one, then come down here and go that way. Don't assume that one. That'll come back to bite you. So make sure you start at the same end wall, go one way and then go the other. I think I've got maybe about eight more to do. So let's bring you guys up top. You can have a different view and we'll finish this out. There you have it guys, double top plate is done, locked down super solid and right, and my 30 brackets are put in place, spaced correctly for my rafters to be slotted in and attached when the day comes. If you guys got any questions or comments about anything you saw on this video, leave me a comment below. Also, if you've not seen the other build videos for this workshop I'm building, there's a link to that playlist down below. It'll take you from the very beginning of breaking ground to this point, and then from here on to the future when it's done. Otherwise, take care. I'll see you guys next time on the workshop.